Welcome to Howard Brown Online Barber College. Today, we are doing the review questions for evaluating professional performance. Let's begin. The master educator understands the need to remain current in technology and skills as well as the mythologies used to teach that information to learners because of the challenges facing them due to varied diversity. They wish to keep producing successful, knowledgeable, skilled, and competent graduates. It may be required by state regulations and regulatory agencies. All of the above. If you chose D, all of the above, you are correct. Improvement in teaching skills will have a greater impact if the educator recognizes the need for a professional development plan, the evaluation is poor, the educator sees a video of the lesson, another educator makes a suggestion. If you chose A, you are correct. When the educator is in the assessment process, feedback will be desired from the supervisor and management, the management and the owner, students, co-workers and management, everyone they come in contact with. If you chose C, you are correct. The purpose of evaluation is to cause anxiety, improve job performance, keep people on their toes, find fault with the educator. If you chose B, you are correct. To begin the assessment process, the educator must identify the areas to be evaluated, set the criteria for expectations, adopt a positive attitude toward self-improvement, all of the above. If you chose D, all of the above, you are correct. An example of a general standard of evaluation to be reviewed would be thoroughness and accuracy, marital status, intrapersonal skills, gender. If you chose A, thoroughness and accuracy, you are correct. Job performance in regard to production would include eliminating non-essential activities, verifying questionable answers on procedures, providing a day of work for a day of pay, meeting commitments as assigned and outlined in the job description, and duties. If you chose D, you are correct. Performance based on thoroughness and accuracy would refer to paying close attention to instructions and essential details, working independently with little or no supervision, maintaining steady performance under work pressure, developing and displaying self-confidence at all times. If you chose A, you are correct. Performance review in problem solving would include evaluating all possible outcomes before taking action, organizing priorities and following through, completing assigned tasks and job duties accurately, maintaining a positive, caring attitude at all times. If you chose A, you are correct. Depending on the organization, the area of job performance dealing with interpersonal skills and professional conduct would review whether the employee 
conducts personal affairs in such a manner that will not reflect negatively on the school or detract from the normal workday, extends courtesy and respect to co-workers, students, clients, and superiors at all times, keeps a professional distance and never frater fraternizes with students, maintains the relationship of advisor, educator, facilitator, and resource person. All of the above. If you chose D, all of the above, you are correct because all organizations want employees who are self-motivated. The performance review in this area will determine whether the educator maintains memberships in professional organizations, practices personal business ethics at all times, respects the property of the institution and takes steps to prevent damage to materials or equipment, initiates prompt corrective actions when goals are not met. If you chose A, you are correct. General standards for work habits might include whether the employee arrives on time daily, doesn't leave scheduled classes or duties to take or make personal calls, returns calls on scheduled breaks, provides a day of work for a day of pay, or all of the above. If you chose D, all of the above, you are correct. An employee who is cost conscious initiates action to solve problems whenever possible without supervisory intervention, sets and meets realistic target dates for project assignments, handles monies responsibly, and recovers, restores monies lost due to carelessness or mismanagement. All of the above. If you chose C, you are correct. Exercises initiative in starting and following through on assigned work would qualify as a general standard for production, independent action, work habits, self-motivation. If you chose B, you are correct. When the educator organizes and plans work in advance, organizes priorities, and follows through, the area of performance is production, interpersonal skills and professional conduct, work method, problem solving. If you chose C, U are correct. A list of general tasks or functions and responsibilities to be performed by the educator as needed by the organization is known as job qualifications, necessary guidelines, summary of duties, job description. If you chose D, you are correct. Most organizations will present a detailed list of job duties and will reserve the right to require additional tasks as deemed necessary by management, various abilities expected, levels of knowledge expected, all of the above. If you chose D, all of the above, you are correct. A teaching responsibility would be follow the school's published curriculum and handouts provided unless deviations are approved, monitor reception desk activities, give tours to prospective students, monitor the parking on the premises. If you chose A, 
you are correct. Formal performance evaluations are typically covered by other colleagues, supervisory personnel, students in the upper classes, the advisory council, If you chose B, you are correct. The responsibility for training educators in the proper procedures and expected behaviors belongs to the Advisory Council, the State Regulatory Agency, Cosmetology Educators of America, Supervisors. If you chose D, you are correct. With regard to performance, other educators are your best team resources. They can provide useful information in teaching strategies and performance, report to supervisors of your poor classroom management skills, rewrite your lesson plans for you to better facilitate efficiency, assist you in front of the class on the procedures and techniques that need improvement. If you chose A, you are correct. An effective source of educator assessment is the learner who will give feedback regarding successful strategies, is able to comment on relationships established with learners, sees the handouts and visual aids produced by the educator, all of the above. If you chose D, all of the above, you are correct. Learners are a valuable resource when gathering assessment information because they cannot be swayed because of prejudices. They will maintain an objective mind. Learner outcomes may directly relate to the performance of the educator. All of the above. If you chose C, you are correct. Providing additional resources for the educator to use for support services and educational programs is the Manufacturer's representative who gives the educator the latest materials. Employer of graduates. Educator content with the status quo who chooses not to move on. None of the above. If you chose B, you are correct. Recent graduates can give the educator a new perspective on entry-level skills that are competitive and may relate to the educator's performance, the number of students who have completed proficiency levels in national testing, the students who have successfully qualified for state licensing, all of the above. If you chose D, all of the above, you are correct. You will continually improve your skills and abilities as a master educator through talking to colleagues, taking classes and seminars, regular self-assessment, reading self-help books. If you chose C, you are correct. The feedback from the various evaluation tools will be used or to create a professional development plan, professional profile, professional resource center, needs assessment. If you chose A, you are correct. Once the objectives and goals have been identified, the educator then can outline the time frame, short-term goals, strategies, long-term goals. If you chose C, 
you are correct to determine if the plan is working and if the goals and objectives are being met the master educator will rewrite the plan periodically evaluate the plan simply ask the students ask other educators If you chose B, you are correct. The professional development plan should include areas that need improvement. This part of the plan would be stated as expected learner outcomes, strategies and activities, short-term goals, a problem area or area of concern. If you chose D, you are correct. The area in the professional development plan that lists two specific objectives that are measurable and tie in with the educator's performance is short-term objectives, long-term objectives, expected learner outcomes, strategies, and activities. If you chose A, you are correct. Behavioral or performance change expected of the learners upon use and implementation of the professional development plan is the area designated as short-term objectives, evaluation of the plan, long-term objectives, expected learner outcomes. If you chose D, you are correct. The evaluation of a professional development plan is achieved using repeated peer and student evaluations, notations of personal observations, student outcomes, all of the above. If you chose D, all of the above, you are correct. Master educators will want to continue with their education to reacquaint themselves with people they haven't seen in years, see if other schools are hiring, stay informed of the changes in technology, products, and tools, all of the above. If you chose C, you are correct. Continuing education to fulfill professional development may be obtained through the National Cosmetology Association, through the Cosmetology Educators of America, by attending National Trade Association workshops and seminars, all of the above. If you chose D, all of the above, you are correct. Continuing education events offer educators the opportunity to promote ser serious networking, share ideas and experiences, raise concerns over issues relevant to the teaching profession, all of the above. If you chose D, all of the above, you are correct. A job description for a master educator will list duties that may change and will include the phrase, will perform other tasks as we see fit, we, the management, reserve the right to have other duties imposed on the employee, and will perform duties deemed necessary by the management will do other jobs that come due. If you chose C, you are correct. Which of the following is an educator's job description? Never release private information on any student without obtaining written authorization from the student or guardian, parent, if applicable, 
on the designated form. Assign clinic students who are not working with clients other course related activities that do not disrupt other clinic activity. Properly prepare graduating students for the applicable state licensing. All of the above. If you chose D, all of the above, you are correct. An example of a non-teaching duty is must attend staff meetings as scheduled and participate in discussion of all agenda items, must keep equipment needed for classroom or clinic instruction clean and in good operating order, must write practical or written assignments on the board each day, must maintain a thorough, accurate, and current knowledge of the subject matter taught. If you chose A, you are correct. During the formal performance evaluation, the supervisor will identify strengths exhibited by the educator, weaknesses needing improvement, a plan of action, all of the above. If you chose D, all of the above, you are correct. This concludes this review. For more classes available with Howard Brown Online Barber College, visit our website at howardbrownonline.com.